Imagine you, a trusted dealer in your area, receive a phone call from a woman saying that she has 600 century-old cards, including a lot of Babe Ruths. Well, it happened to somebody. Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. So uh, it's Friday, which means Attic Find Friday. It's my day off too, so maybe I get this video out early. Um, I actually have a lot of Attic Find Fridays all of a sudden. I was running out, I mentioned it on a video or two, and people sent me a bunch, and there have actually been a few recently, and now I have somebody who wants to sponsor my channel who can provide me with even more of them. So, well, I'm conversing with that person about potential sponsorship opportunity. Uh, so, this story is what we're calling, what Sports Collectors Daily is calling, the Georgia W Card Find. And a lot of these details come from Sports Collectors Daily, so uh, I always love giving them credit because they do an awesome job with these. Uh, so it's about 600 sports and non-sports cards uh, a, that are a century old, like I said. And a woman called up J&J Sports Cards, also known as Got Baseball Cards, owned by Joe Davis. And you, know, you remember, you might recognize Joe Davis from uh, quite a few uh, sports card investor videos. He is also in Atlanta and interestingly sports card investor brought him in for the opening and I assume that they're competing with each other. It seems like an interesting dynamic. So she called the store, told them what she had and they told her to bring the cards in. She had them in a cigar box. Again, what is with these old cigar boxes? They, uh, just everybody seemed to have old, old pre-war cards and cigar, cigar boxes back in those days. So she goes into the shop. She spends six or seven hours. She wanted to be educated. She didn't want to just go in and say, what will you give me for these? And so they sat down and actually Joe Davis, the owner, wasn't even there that day. And so his employees went through this with her. And this is the beauty of a, uh, a local card shop. If you have a good owner, if your owner has good employees, they can educate you. They can teach you about this stuff. A lot of, and this is not a criticism of a lot of the newer dealers who have popped up recently, they fill a different area of the hobby, which is mostly ultra modern. And the, the, <laughs> the dealers in card shops obviously also deal in ultra modern, but they know so much about vintage and pre-war stuff. And that's where they set themselves apart, in my opinion. So the story behind this is that they, uh, the original collector was a man on Coney Island in the 1920s, obviously. And he, as he got up there in age, he had a caretaker who was taking care of him. And uh, at the end of his life, he passed these cards on to his caretaker. And she just stored them in a cigar box in her closet for decades and decades and decades. Her daughter uh, was cleaning out her house and was looking through the closet and found this cigar box and decided to go through it, open it up, found all these cards and decided to, to I assume, Google a card shop in the area. And uh, that's how she ended up there in Got Baseball Cards or J&J &J Sports Cards. In this collection were 20 Babe Ruth cards, five different. So there's stacks of similar Babe Ruth cards. Uh, so for instance, the W551 Ruth from 1921, those there, some of those in there, and they're on the, and I'm using PSA population here because it's so much easier than SGCs. These are going to SGC, which I think is the right move, but uh, for SGC, their pop report is better now that it's in their app but it's also difficult to, like there's just so many different variations that they have in their pop report. It's difficult for me to use. Um, it also, as la last I knew a couple months ago, doesn't give you recent auction prices, which PSAs does. So I'm just gonna use the PSA pop report for context here. This W551 Ruth, 1921, there are about 160 in the PSA population, an authentic, sells for last one in September sold for about 1200 bucks. So, uh, you know, this 1200 bucks for one of the cards and there are a bunch of those specifically. 
Uh, PSA 2 sells for about 2500 bucks. so even if one comes back a 2, which is probably kind of doubtful, it's not a huge increase from an authentic to a 2. It, it more than doubles it, but it's still not massive, like you might think. I also see in this photo of the Ruths, of W512 Ruth, PSA pops similar at about 200 cards graded. An authentic sells for about $1,000 also. I also spot in this uh, photo a 1923 W515-1 Ruth card, card number three. Uh, PSA pop is only about 75. An authentic sells for about $2,000. Couldn't quite make out all of these cards, the different cards in here. Those are the ones that I picked out. Just trying to give you a sense of the values of these. Uh, there were also 15 Ty Cobbs, three of which were different from each other. Uh, three different variations or different cards. Ten Walter Johnsons. Nine Rogers Hornsby's. Twenty-four Triss Speakers. Uh, I actually, <laughs> really off topic here, I... I uh, used to work many, many years ago with a man named Triss, and my first question for him, of course, was, were you named after Triss Speaker? And he had never heard of Triss Speaker. So these are all strip cards. Uh, strip cards were, of course, back then created in a strip, and usually store owners, like a candy shop, would tear them or cut them and hand them out to kids who were buying candy in their shop. So, you know, between the hand cut or hand torn factor as well as kids just taking them and running and then also the fact that they're on paper stock instead of card stock is why it's so rare to find high grade or even mid grade uh, strip cards so these are all and Joe Davis talked about this in one of the articles he thinks that they are all poor condition and he would be lucky if any come back a two maybe a three but uh, yeah, most of them, just by the looks of them, are authentic, maybe ones, possibly twos. In the Ty Cobbs, there are uh, a bunch of W551s. There are also 10 of boxing legend Jack Dempsey. Jack Dempsey was uh, a world heavyweight champion for seven years, 1919 through 1926. There's also a Walter Hagen card. Uh, I love these oddball ones. Walter Hagen. I was a golfer in college. I also worked at a mini golf course and driving range. Uh, big into golf as a, as a younger man. Uh, Jack, uh, Walter Hagen, who won 11 majors, which is third behind Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods, had a card in this collection. He's also considered the father of professional golf. Uh, and then Bill Tilden, W551 card. I was also a big tennis player, much bigger tennis player than I was golfer. Played in high school, played in college a bit and then into my 20s, loved tennis more than I ever loved golf. I loved golf for the social aspect, um, you know, just the going out with your friends. Tennis I loved to play. So Bill Tilden won 14 major championships, including six straight U.S. Opens in the 1920s. He was also the first American man to win Wimbledon in 1920. He's a big, big factor in tennis history. Bunch of non-sports stuff, 1924. W562 President's Cards of Washington, Lincoln, and Grant. So that's really cool. 34 Charlie Chaplin cards. I wish that they had included some photos of some of these. Six Charles Lindbergh cards. So ultimately, this woman decided to consign her collection, her mother's collection, or I guess not even her mother's collection. It's the, her mother's, the person her mother was a caretaker for, uh, to maximize her mother rather than... <laughs> to maximize her value rather than selling as a collection. I think this is probably the right choice, and I'm curious what you think. Uh, if you have 600 cards, you go in, you can sign them with a shop, you have them grade them and consign them, or the shop might pay you 40 or 50% of the ultimate value if you're lucky. So I think this is the right move. What are they gonna give you, like 70% after grading and fees and their consignment take? I'm not really sure, but I'm sure you would know. If you know, let me know in comments. Uh, I think this is the right move for her. Hall of Famers, big cards, things like that. Off to SGC, they expect to have them back in uh, early March, and you, they'll probably post an update on their Facebook page. They also said they'd be selling them on their eBay, which has got baseball cards 
eBay store. Uh, I was not familiar with Got Baseball cards before this article. Obviously, I had seen Joe Davis on a um, sports card investor video, but didn't know anything about him. So uh, I will be following the story, and I will update any any updates that come in. I'll probably put in my newsletter. My newsletter is free. It's weekly. Every Monday morning comes out. Uh, it has just hit 200 subscribers yesterday. It's brand new, and it's again, it's free. <laughs> And it's linked in the description, so you can make sure you subscribe to that. And yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys have a great weekend. I am also off on Monday, so I'm expecting maybe to put out another video of some sort Monday, which I haven't done in a while. All right, thanks guys.